All right, all right. What's going on, party people? This your man Griff. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video called, I think it might have been a Fritter Friday or something, but I did a video called Where's My Money? So if you go on YouTube and you search Griffin Notary, Where's My Money? That, <coughs> excuse me, that video will pop up. Um, and it was about signing companies not being responsive, shutting down, and not paying the notaries the outstanding debt that they owe the notaries. And I talked about a lot of the different reasons behind that. Um, and then furthermore, a couple of weeks later comes another, you know, series of emails and Facebook screen posts and all of that, basically confirming that a particular signing company, um, is not able or will not, will be shutting down and not paying their debts. So, and I talked about, um, I talked about the various reasons, you know, I've always said how a person runs their regular business can, or their notary business can determine how they run their signing company. You know, you have that aspect. They get their money through the lender who gets, who gives it to the title, who then gives it to the, um, the signing company who eventually gives it to us. So you have all of those factors in play and I know a lot of people put a lot of blame and hurt on the signing company, but sometimes it's not on them. Um, could there be mismanagement? I've heard stories of no of signing companies just taking the money and buying houses and cars and just partying it up. And then when the market turned just a little bit or they had too many notaries give them cause errors and then all of a sudden, that those title companies said, I don't want to use you anymore because you don't know how to run your business with these notaries. And then all the money stopped and then they're not paying anybody. So in other words, as the old saying goes, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, and it catches up with you. Don't think that it's just a signing company issue. <coughs> Excuse me. For some of the scenarios that are out there, it could actually be that the title company collapsed. And if they collapsed, did they collapse because the lender collapsed? Um, there are title companies, and I've talked about this before, and I just want to explain to y'all the process here that could be at play, and really that is at play, but it depends on, really it starts with the lender. If you have a lender Okay, and note the term I'm using, lender. I'm not saying bank. If you have a person or entity or group that is lending money to homeowners or to potential homeowners, and all that lender does is refinances, and they don't do anything else. They don't do reverse mortgages. They don't do HELOCs. They don't do debt settlements. They don't do any other type of financial stuff. They don't do loan modification. This lender, this lending of money person only does refinances where well, they have to have a title company whether internal or external and that title company specifically works with them and if you have a title company that primarily works with lenders who only are one dimensional in the financial product that they can provide to homeowners and potential homeowners when that revenue dries up or that source dries up and the way it dries up is their higher interest rates. So when the interest rates go up, that means those lenders can no longer lend money out. They're not going to get people who are wanting to buy a house or refinance at seven, eight, nine percent. Okay, that's going to be the initial shock. Now, granted, people are coming back around and saying, you know what, I need to refinance and I'm going to do it anyway. The problem is those people them fell out of the market, lost capital, had to just file bankruptcy. So when that happens to the lender, it, rip, it ripples all the way through and it hits the title company, escrow settlement people, and then the signing companies and then the notaries. So even if you don't work with signing companies and you are direct, that can still affect you because if you only have one or two direct clients, 
and those two direct clients got 50% or more of their monthly volume coming from lenders. And in this case, I'm going to define lenders, non-traditional lenders, meaning they're not from banks like Wells Fargo, Truist, um, not B, but BBT is Truist now, um, Navy Federal, etc. from <coughs> your more established banks. There are brokers, if you got these lenders who are brokers, um, that they don't have access to federal government programs like the FHA, the VA, and all of that, then it's going to be slim pickings. So that title company is tied into lenders who have a limited supply or limited access or resources from other ways of providing financial products for a homeowner or a potential homeowner. So if that title company hasn't expanded their reach to provide title services, or as it would say, titling services to Wells Fargo, BB&T, so forth and so on, then guess what? You know, now the same can be true for the traditional lenders. There are some lenders that have fallen out of doing refinances because they never established themselves in the reverse mortgage market or, all, or any of that. But the companies who established themselves to do HELOCs, those are popping. Um, there are still companies out there refinancing and those title companies who are connected <coughs> excuse me, with those lenders are still doing business, which means those title companies, if they're connected to you as a notary directly or a signing company, you will still see funds coming. You will still see opportunities to make money coming through in your area, depending on if they're working in your area, but they are still out there. So when you have a signing company who closes the door and when they say they can't pay anybody, I would have to assume that they are hopefully that at worst, I'm hoping best case scenario is that they're not getting compensated from their client, which would be the title settlement escrow people. Um, and the reason why the title people aren't paying them is because their client, the lender can't pay them. I'm hoping, I mean, that's will be the best case scenario. Um, but the worst will be if the person who is the signing company can't pay you because they've burned through all the money. They've overspent. They took a whole lot of owner's draws for themselves. Um, they got caught up in all this kind of stuff and they just don't have the money, even though they got paid, but they just didn't manage their money right. It could be those two things or a couple of others. For the notary, this is why I've always talked about being mindful of where you spend your non- business operating time <clears throat> meaning you can't go to every conference you can't go to every meetup you can't go you can't go you can't go because you need to be out there making money am i saying conferences are bad no i always said if you're going to go make sure you go for a purpose that you're going to learn something and grow from that what you learn not going just so you can say i'm in the house and i'm here and you just want to be able to smooth with people and just get you know just you know, some exposure. Okay, great. That's nice. You you was exposed to these people and they know you, but at the end of the conference, none of them are paying you to do work, you know, unless it's a conference for signing companies and then you go there and meet up with them. But it, even with that, if they're, <coughs> if they're not doing work in your area, the signing company can't funnel any work to you. So going to every little get together that's non- business making money related can hurt you financially because you're spending all your money doing that you're hawking you know the house to go to these other items these other events and then you turn around and then when a signing company says now we can't pay you the two thousand dollars that we owe you for all the signings you've done that hurts because you were depending on that money to pay these bills the credit cards and all of that for the flight tickets and all of that and a lot of us got short-sighted so we blame the signing company but if you're in hawk now because you could not pay you can't pay for what you 
overextended yourself for, that's on you. That would be on me. That's why I'm cautious and I'm careful about where I'm going, where I'm spending money. Nothing wrong with buying all the fancy shirts, logos, all of that. <clears throat> but if you don't have, if you really don't have the money for it, all that, you shouldn't have been spending it. And that is something that I learned years ago. The bottom line of all what I'm saying is, this is a part of business. Every business industry goes through this. Food, the food delivery things go through it. All of a sudden, the food company goes out, delivery company, and then they don't pay anybody. And we have to be mindful of that and and make better decisions as to how we are going to navigate through being a business owner. If you was just in it for the quick buck, it may or may not affect you as much. But if you was looking at this as this is going to be my main deal. <laughs> Yeah, it can hurt you. Um, and I've had times where I hadn't got paid and all of that. Um, it's not hasn't been that many, but yeah, it will hurt, you know. Um, and all I can say is use your legal shield, talk to the attorneys there and find out what legal um recourse you have for something like this. Um, of course, if it's below a certain dollar amount, all they will say is well, that's the smallest claim, so you can go to small claims court. Problem is, you're in a state, they're in a different state, and trying to do all of that, you know, so now that means you need to talk to your accountant and find out how do you write that off as a loss, that you had this revenue coming in, but you aren't getting paid for it. How do you write that off as a loss on your books? So, I know we want to blame this, you know, and that, and point, but... This, unfortunately, is how things roll in this industry. It's not fun. It doesn't feel good. It's not pleasant whatsoever. But you have people who get to stick their neck too far out. And then all of a sudden, because they think the waterfall is never going to stop. It's just going to keep coming down. And then all of a sudden, a big boulder lands in the creek. 10 miles up and stops the floor of water. And the lenders are the, are the creek. They're the lenders are the 10 miles up and something happens to the lender, hits the title, hits the signing, hits us. That's the way it flows. It's not pleasant. It's not nice. How do you stop that? I have no clue whatsoever. Because we as the notaries can't control what the lenders do we can't control what the title do. We can't control what the signing company do, but we can only control what we do. So going forward with this knowledge now, you need to say, okay, I need to make better financial decisions and be much more cautious about where I spend my money and how I spend my money, not get caught up in all the hype that people are laying out there and I should be okay. And don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed that you can't be at every event. Don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed that you can't be at every meetup. And this is not me trying to come down on the people who have these events. No, I'm not saying mm -mm, you can do whatever you want. You're going to do. <clears throat> but if you as a notary who's not doing the event trying to attend, you really can't afford to go. And any financial planner will tell you, if you really can't afford to go, don't go. You don't do what you really can't afford to do. And now that you know what the process is and how things can pan out, you have to always be ready that these people who are supposed to pay me might stop in a heartbeat. So give me your thoughts. Tell me in the comment section what you think about all of this. You don't have to say the name of the company. I appreciate it if you didn't because... I know that's a hurtful and, and probably embarrassing thing for that person or persons because they had good intentions, but it didn't work out the way they wanted for whatever reason. And I hope the best for them. Um, and I'm sure they're going to bounce back, <clears throat> hopefully come back stronger. But y'all have a good one. I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. Y'all have a great day. Appreciate you. Peace.